In the last video, we identified a small change that compromised one file in a large group of files we might want to check. Let's uh, look at how it behaves if there are different files uh, that have been added. So let's assume this is the compromise system. Now on the old system, the one that we determined was good and we exported a set of files, we had not installed the Apache web server. So let's assume this is a new system that we've just gotten and it has Apache on it. So go ahead and take a second and do an apt install Apache 2. Pause the video, make that work. And if I do an ls multi user target wants here, you can see that Apache 2 service has been added. But if I do an ls home student good files one multi user target wants, we can see that there is no Apache service. So I just wanted to point out how it will respond in this case. If I do a diff hyphen QR, just show file names, dot um, with, we want to do actually home student good files one, because those are the same thing. It will report out that only in multi-user target wants right here do we have the Apache 2 service. So it may be a good idea, especially if you're like in Cyber Patriot, to have a clean version, the operating system you're working with available, and do a quick apt install. You know, you could add it. So that's an idea. Um, but the point is, I just wanted to mention that it does include files that are new as well. So let's take it one step further. This is uh, Cyber Patriot advice. And let's go to Home Student and let's create a folder. I'll call this folder my script. Take a second and do that. Uh, let's cd into my script. And let's pico a file called comparescript.sh. Make it look like this. Let's just add one line at the very top. diff hyphen qr. We'll just make a simple diff command here that we know is going to work and we know on this system etsy system d system is a folder that we've exported that we want to check so after we export the file we create this and let's compare it to good files one in this folder save that exit and uh so the good files would come in from a usb drive right like you would have probably this script with the good files all in one folder. So I'll go ahead and I'll do a cp hyphen r. And in this case, it's good files one. So I'll, I'll copy good files one right here, like this. And if I do an ls, we now have our compare script and we have our good files that we've pulled from another system. So if we drop this script along with our good files, We've got something that's ready to go. I need to do a chmod 777 compare script just to make it executable. But now when I run compare script, it's going to go check that out for me. It's going to tell me, okay, this new system has Apache 2 service there. This new system apparently has rsync service that's been modified. I might want to go look at that. So let's just add one more directory. Uh, let's look at a couple, actually. Um, I could cd into um, Etsy. We've got all these files. Um, some of the ones that are good are the cron files here. So I would go into, um, let's cd to cron.daily inside of Etsy. And so these are files that are executed by cron every day. So let's do an lsalh. And you can see that these are all scripts. So let's pico that Apache 2 and see what's in there. So this is executed. It's a bin sh. Um, it'll go in and it will do all of this every day. And by default, because I just installed Apache, I know this hasn't been messed with. So let's assume now that we are on a good system. Not using two systems, I'm just using one. We're making an assumption here. I'll do an mkdir home student uh, my script. 
and let's call this uh, cron dot daily. And I'll do a CP. There's no fold. There are no folders here, so I can just do an asterisk. Home student my script cron dot daily. So now I've grabbed a good version of cron dot daily. Let's go in and make one change real quick. I'll pico into Apache two. And at the very bottom here, I'll add like a netcat listener. I don't know if this would work or not. We'll talk about netcat if we haven't. I'll do a netcat listen 9000 and um, let's see. Let's just do a netcat listen 9000. We won't worry about piping it to bin bash or anything, but we'll add a line to the very end that may be malicious. So every day, this now would be run on this system. Okay, so now I've made a change here. We're assuming this is a bad um, directory here, a new directory. Let's cd to home student my script, pico, compare script.sh, and I'll hit control K to kill. I'll hit U twice just to help me out there. And we know that we have a folder in my script called cron.daily. And we want to compare that to Etsy cron dot daily. And so now we've got a diff that's going to report out on system D and cron dot daily. Okay, so let's assume now that I've pulled my script onto our new computer that we want to check out. I run my script, excuse me, compare script. And it's going to tell me that uh, in cron.daily apache2 and cron.daily apache differ and so we may want to go in and run a more detailed diff to figure out what that is right I could just do a straight diff and we could automate this as well we could make this process even easier so that we don't have to actually copy and paste these file names in. We get creative when we talk um, scripting. And we can see that, oh look, there's a netcat hyphen L9000. If you see that in a script, for example, in Cyber Patriot, you bet. Get rid of that if it's not supposed to be there. Analyze what it is, you should know what it is. Um, if you're not, do your research, right? Okay, so that is it. Uh, good luck building your scripts. There are lots of different folders. You can ask your instructor. Let's have some after class conversations about what would be some good folders to kind of do this with. This isn't a total solution. This isn't going to solve all your problems, but um, it certainly is a good approach and you can do some good preparation here.